What's up guys, my name is Ace, and this week's aftermarket part in Modern Warfare 3 is the Jack Glassless Optic. So today, we're gonna be doing a full breakdown of this, comparing it to some of the other optics, and also taking a look at one of its key benefits, which is it improves our firing aim stability. Now, the downside of that is there is a very slight reduction to our aim down sight speed. This is a 2% reduction, so for most guns, we're looking at like roughly 5 milliseconds, which is really not that bad at all, but if you compare that to something like the Mark III Reflector, that doesn't harm our aim down sight speed at all. And just in case you guys are curious, this is what the Jack Glassless Optic looks like when you're aiming down sight. So similar to the Mark III Reflector, we don't have a full frame on this. It is open at the top. However, this one does extend upward quite a bit more, and it also has the two little points that kind of converge toward the center on the dot, and those could potentially get in the way of your target in some scenarios. Now, a few months ago, I did a comparison of some of the more popular low zoom optics in the game, and I just wanted to take that same comparison, but now pop in the Jack Glassless Optic. And as we can see here, it doesn't really take up a whole lot of your screen compared to some of the other optics, like the Slimline Pro, for instance. That's gonna take up more screen space compared to this one. However, in saying that, the width of the frame of this optic is quite a bit wider than most of these other optics, aside from the Cronin Intlis MSP-12. But like, if you compare it to the Mark III Reflector here, you can see that the posts on the side of the optic are quite a bit thicker, and therefore they could potentially get in your way in some situations. So definitely some pros, some cons there. I would say when it comes to the visibility of this optic, that's largely just gonna come down to preference, just like it always does with these optics. But now let's move on to the most interesting part of this optic, and that is the fact that it helps you with firing aim stability. And this is a key stat that I have covered in the past that isn't displayed anywhere in the advanced stats, but it can actually make a fairly notable difference to our recoil. Now in saying that, some guns require firing aim stability far more than others, and let's just start this off with the MCW, comparing the base gun with no attachments, with the base gun just using the glassless optic on it. And honestly, when you take a close look at this, I wouldn't say there's any massive improvement here. However, in a blind test here, if I had to choose the left recoil pattern or the right one, I would lean very slightly toward the right recoil pattern. It just seems things are a little bit more consistent there. But this is one of the cases where it's not really that obvious. The MCW doesn't require a whole lot of firing aim stability. So let's choose something a little bit different here in the Assault Rifle category and have a look at the MTZ-556. And with this one, we can really tell the difference here. This optic tightens things up a lot better and keeps that recoil really nicely on that recoil path. And therefore, it doesn't bounce around quite as much as if we weren't using this optic. And that's pretty impressive considering this is just an optic and you aren't using one of your like underbarrel slots or a muzzle slot, for instance. After that, we'll have a look at just a few more comparisons here with just a random selection of guns that I decided to go with. The next gun to look at is the BP-50. And again, I'm not seeing a massive difference here, but there is a very subtle difference and I would definitely lean in the direction of that right recoil plot. Then with the AMR-9, honestly, this is probably the worst result out of all of them. I'm not really seeing much of a notable difference here at all. And then finally, I've got the Bass B just because that has kind of a unique recoil pattern now. And just like with most of the guns, I would say the right recoil pattern is just slightly better than the left. So that firing aim stability improvement that we gain from this optic, it doesn't seem to be major, but it's definitely there. And if you are trying to squeeze out as much firing aim stability as possible, if you're going for an accuracy build and you would normally be using like a Mark III reflector, perhaps you would want to lean in the direction of this Jack Glassless optic. Outside of that though, my personal preference is still going to be the Mark III Reflector on the vast majority of the builds that I'm going to create. That's not to say that I won't ever dabble with this optic, you may see this start to pop up on some of my future class setups, but I think that's only going to be in cases where I'm really trying to max out that firing aim stability stat. Now of course, that is just my opinion on this, and this is going to be a highly subjective topic, it always is when it comes to optics, but I'd love to hear what you guys think about this Jack Glassless optic in those comments down below. Do you see yourself using this optic in the future, or not so much? Are you going to stick to your usual optic that you use? If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.